Yo, yo, yo. What's up? It's your boy, Mr. Gradius here, coming at you. And this video is about equations with rational numbers. This is going to be a good one, so make sure you follow along, all right? Um, so, we're going to be solving equations that have a bunch of fractions or have a bunch of decimals. And what our goal is going to be is I know that our gives some of you like anxiety. You're just like, oh man, I hate fractions, I hate decimals. So our what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of all of them. And I'm gonna show you a trick so that we can get rid of every fraction or we can get rid of every decimal, and then it's gonna look like an equation with only whole numbers or integers. So just the values that we've been working with for, so far this school year. So here we go. I've got equations with a bunch of fractions: seven tenths n plus 3 over 2 equals 3 fifths n plus 2. So here are the two first steps in order to solve equations with fractions, and this is really the steps on how to get rid of the fractions. So the first thing we want to do is we want to determine the least common multiple of the denominators. So I'm looking at my denominators, 10, 2, and 5. 2 doesn't have a denominator, right? That's just 1, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, but I'm looking at my three denominators, 10, 2, and 5. Okay, and I want to figure out what is the least common multiple of 10, 2, and 5. Now, the best way to do it is just to look at the largest of the three denominators. If I look at 10, I want to see, well, can I multiply 2 by something to get to 10? And the answer is yes, I can multiply by 5, which means also, can I multiply 5 by something to get to 10? And the answer is yes, I can multiply 5 by 2. So, the least common multiple here is 10 because 10 is a multiple of 2, it is a multiple of 5, and it is a multiple of 10. So here's what we're going to do. Once we figure out that our least common multiple is 10, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 10. So here's what I mean by that. And this is where we're going to have to do some distributed property, or sort of, but not really. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equal sign by 10, but by really what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every single term by 10. So I'm going to take this 7 tenths n and multiply it by 10 over 1. I'm going to take 3 over 2 and multiply it by 10 over 1. I'm going to take 3 over 5 and multiply it by 10 over 1. And I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by 10 over 1. I am multiplying every single thing in this equation by 10. This is maintaining that balance still. I'm not changing the value of n or of my equation here. What I'm doing is by multiplying everything by the exact same thing, I'm keeping the equation equal. I'm keeping the left side and the right side totally balanced, and I'm not changing my value for n. Okay, it is still, the left side is still proportional to the right side, and, and so on and so forth. So, this is where cross simplifying comes in handy. Because I multiplied everything by 10, I get to look at it, and I did that on purpose. The reason why we chose 10 is it will it guarantees us to cancel out our denominators if I look at cross simplifying. So I'm looking at 10 and 10. These cancel each other out. I'm left with just this 7n right here, okay? Because the 7 hasn't gone away. So this becomes 7n. So I'm going to bring that down. Plus, 3 over 2 times 10. 2 and 10. This is what I'm looking at on cross simplifying. 2 and 10. Well, the 2 cancels out because I can divide this by 2, which means I can divide my 10 by 2 to get 5. So I actually have to do the 3 times 5 right here, and that's 15. Now I can simplify 3 fifths, and I'm going to bring down my equal sign now. 3 fifths, again, I can divide by 5. That cancels out. Divide by 5, that becomes a 2. So I still have to multiply it. 3 times 2 is 6. The n stays. That doesn't go anywhere. Plus, 2 times 10 is 20. So I multiply every single value by 10. And if you look, the reason why we chose 10 is it made sure that all of our denominators canceled out. So now I don't have any fractions. So I just have 7n plus 15 equals 6n plus 20. Now, for step three, I just use my inverse operations to solve this equation. Okay, so I'm using my inverse operations to solve this equation. So what I'm going to do is I forgot to put a slide after this, but I mean for, for this particular problem, let's actually finish solving this, 
this problem. So that's 7n plus 15 equals 6n plus 20. So 7n plus 15 equals 6n plus 20. So now I can actually solve this like normal by moving. I have my variable on the left and right side of the equal sign, so I want to have it on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 6n from both sides just to get my variable to the same side. That's my first goal whenever I have the variable on both sides of the equal sign. So I have n plus 15 equals 20. Subtract 15. And I get n equals 5. So I'm done. So this complicated looking fraction here really just gives me an answer of n equals 5. Now, will it always work out that nicely? Not quite, but this one did, which is kind of nice. So here we go, we have another one. This one only has two fractions, okay? Two, two um, integers or whole, or, or whole numbers, okay? So we're gonna look at the denominators of our fraction and find the least common multiple, the lowest common multiple. So the cool part about this one is I have one seventh and three sevenths. And so because they're the same exact denominator, I, it's really easy to find my lowest common multiple because it's gonna be that denominator. So I get to multiply everything in this fraction or this equation by 7. So I gotta multiply negative 6 by 7. I gotta multiply 3 7 by 7 over 1. And then I also gotta multiply 4 by 7. I chose 7 because 7 is my lowest common multiple. It is the denominator. Okay, so that's guaranteed to cancel out. So when we have the same denominator, it's actually a little bit easier because, sorry, I don't know why I had that little uh, tick mark there here. We don't need that. Okay. So by having the same denominator for sevenths and sevenths, then I can just can't cross cancel my sevenths because these go away and I'm left with 1k. Or I'm just going to write k because there's no point writing the 1. Negative 6 times 7 is negative 42. 3 sevenths times 7, well the sevenths cancel so I'm left with 3k. And then this is plus 28. So now we made this somewhat difficult looking equation a lot more simple by multiplying everything by 7 in order to get to this point right here. So now what I get to do is I get to get to solve like normal. So I'm going to get my variable to the same side first. I'm not going to worry about the negative 42 or the plus 28 yet, positive 28. I'm going to worry about my k's first and I'm going to subtract k from both sides just to get it to the same side of the equal sign because that goes away. I have negative 42 equals, this is like a 1k, right? So this is 2k plus 28. Ha! 2k. That's funny. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides because now I'm just trying to get my variable by itself, right? So that's why I'm getting rid of the 28, not the negative 42. This is, this is by itself on the left side of the equal sign. This is fine. I got to get my k by itself. I have to get rid of the 2 and get rid of the positive 28. So I'm subtracting 28 from both sides. I'm bringing down 2k. These go away. Negative 42 minus 28 is going to give me negative 70. Okay. Then I divide both sides by 2. And this is going to give me k equals negative. Negative divided by positive is always negative. 35. And I'm done. All right. Okay. So this is one that I want you to try on your own. Just give it a shot. There's no reason not to. And um, let's just see how you do. And then you can check your answer afterwards. So please pause this and actually try it and see if you kind of have an idea of how to find at least one multiple and how to multiply everything. Then you can check your work, okay? All right, so I'm looking for my lowest common multiple. I'm looking with 6, 2, and 4 are my three values, right? Those are my denominators. So I can check by, one, looking at the largest number. Can 2 go into 6? Can I multiply 2 by something to get to 6? Yes, so that's good. Can I multiply 4 by something to get to 6? And the answer is no, I cannot. Okay, so 6 is not going to be my lowest common multiple. But if I do 2 times 6 right here, that gives me 12. Okay, can I multiply 4 by something to get to 12? And the answer is yep. So 12 is my lowest common multiple. So if I multiply everything by 12, I will get rid of, if I multiply everything by 12 over 1, I will get rid of all the fractions. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply by 12 over 1. Every single thing. Okay? And now, yes, we actually have to go through and do our cross-simplifying, though, because this one's not just going to cancel things out, so we have to actually cross-simplify. So like 6 and 12 right here. This becomes a 1 because I'm dividing by 6. This becomes a 2. So I have to do 2 times 5, which is 10x. Plus 12. 
equals, let's see, two cancels, but I divided by two, so it means 12 divided by two is six. One times six is negative six x. I kept my negative sign, I kept my x. And then we have to divide by four to get three, so one, goes, one times three is positive. Now I get to solve like normal. I like to get rid of my negative numbers if I can. So I'm going to add 6x to both sides. That's going to give me 16x plus 12 equals 3. Now I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. I get 16x equals, let's see, 3 minus 12 is negative 9 divide by 16. Now this is okay. So if we look here, that goes away. So I get x equals negative 9 over 16. I can actually leave my answer this way. This is just negative 9 over 16 because I know I'm supposed to actually do my division here. But that's how we show our work this way. Is fractions are okay because my answer is actually going to give me a fraction. It's not going to work out perfectly, which is fine. And so the answer is just negative 9 over 16. Don't actually divide to change this into a decimal. Just leave it as the fraction answer and we're done. Okay, so hopefully we see that when I divide it by 16, this is a fraction right here, and this is, turns out to be my final answer. All right, final thing that we're going to see is also decimals. Okay, so you're going to have equations with decimals. Decimals, you can still do the operations with the decimals if you want. I just know a lot of us don't like to do operations with decimals. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move the decimal in every single term so that we get rid of it. But if we, we have to determine what the most amount of spaces we have to move it, and that's how many spaces we have to move it for all pieces. Okay, so first step one, and I definitely want you writing this down under your key concepts, is which term the decimal needs to be moved the farthest. So if I look here at 0 0.2, there's only one number after the decimal. 0 0.75 has two numbers after the decimal. 0 0.5 only has one. So this one has to be moved the furthest. And the amount I have to move my decimal to get rid of it, I can move it over once and twice. So because I have to move my decimal over twice on 0.75 to get rid of it, that means I'm moving the decimal in every term that many times to the right. So that means here in front of my R, I had to move my decimal. So this 0.2, I had to move it over twice. That's once, twice. So this becomes 20R plus 75. We already moved it. That's the one that we determined we had to move it over twice. And that means I move this one over twice. It becomes 50. And I keep the R. So decimals are a little bit easier. We don't, it's just moving our decimal, but we're moving in every single term. So we got to figure out which one needs to be moved the furthest because this gets rid of all my decimals. And again, now I get to solve like normal. Subtract 20R from both sides. I get 75 equals 30R. Divide by 30. And normally I know I just got done saying that um, we like to keep it in the fraction, especially when the division doesn't work out perfectly. But when the original problem is in decimals, we actually want to have a decimal answer. So I would actually do 75 divided by 30. Okay, And I'm going to save you guys some trouble here and just tell you the answer is 2.5. So my answer is 2.5. Okay, So this one I would actually have to do the division just because we started off with decimals. But I do get an answer of 2.5. So the big thing is just move the decimal over as many times as you need. And I almost forgot, I do have a joke for you. This is the last problem, by the way, but I do have a joke for you. So why should you worry about the math teacher when he, when he is holding graph paper? So why should you worry about the math teacher when he is holding graph paper? Because he's plotting something. Ha! <laughs> okay, sorry. It's a good one. It's good. Okay. There you go. Last problem. I want you guys to try it on your own and um, see how you do it. Just move the decimals over to get rid of it. But if you do that, you have to do it in every single value. Okay, so don't forget about these whole numbers as well, or these integers. So go ahead and try it and then solve it. Okay, so I look at see which one I need to move the furthest. And the one I need to move the furthest is, well, they're both the same. I just have to move them over once. So I'll move it over once. Move it over once. But... That means on this, I have to add the decimal and move it over once to make this a 20. Add my decimal and move it over once to make this a 40. Really what I'm doing, you guys, I'm just multiplying everything by 10. When you multiply by 10, it moves the decimal to the right. Multiplying by 10, multiplying by 10, it moves the decimal to the right, multiplying by 10. So really I have 24x minus 20 equals negative 16x 
minus 40. Now, do we have to do all this decimal movement? Absolutely not. You could just solve this equation with decimal by adding 1.6x to both sides and so on and so forth. I just know some people hate decimals. So this is the alternative to get rid of it. And now we have a pretty normal equation to solve from here. Add 16x to both sides. Add 16x to both sides because that gets rid of it. That's why we did it. I have 40x minus 20 equals negative 40. Add 20 to both sides. I have 40x equals, that goes away, negative 20 divided by 40. X equals, that's supposed to be a 40. X equals, let's see, this is going to be 20 over 40 is 1 half. So that's negative 1 half. But because I said we have decimals, we normally like to write our answer in a decimal. So that's really x equals negative 0 0.5. Okay? Okay, so just a quick recap. Quick recap for decimals. Determine which one needs to be moved the furthest. Then move that decimal over that many times. But move everything over that many times as well. Okay, so like this equation, really what we did is we multiplied everything by 100. Because when you multiply by 100, you're moving your decimal over to the left right twice okay and then for fractions determine the lowest common multiple look at your denominators and multiply every single thing in that fraction by that lowest common multiple and that will get rid of your fractions okay I hope this helped this one's gonna take some practice you guys so let's make sure we get that practice in and make sure you're asking for help and you're asking questions okay uh, thanks for watching uh, leave some comments no, you don't need to leave comments. I'm just kidding. But hey, thanks for watching. If you need anything, let me know. G out.